from a company's perspective, if you want your marketing to work, if you want to be totally effective, you need that full funnel. You need something for the people who just barely even know they have a problem. You need something for people who are considering solutions and don't even know which one they're going with yet. And then you need content and advertising and marketing for people who know they're going to buy. Hey everyone, James Roloff here, and I am with my good longtime digital marketing expert friend here, Egan Heath. You want to say hi, Egan? Yeah, thank you. So today I wanted to really talk about impactful things from a marketing strategy standpoint. A lot of companies right now, depending on your industry, are struggling with generating leads, keeping things busy. And Egan, as he's deep in the world of consulting different people on their marketing strategy, has a really good pulse on what things are working, what things are not. But more broadly, I just wanted to ask you, Egan, what do you see as the big mistake that a lot of marketing teams are making today? Yeah, thanks, James. And like you mentioned, I've been running an agency now. This is going on eight years for me. And so I've seen a lot, had a lot of conversations with different businesses. And what I'm saying now and what I've what I've put together over time is that people are hanging their hat on one campaign, one channel too much. And what I mean by that is we tried Google ads. Did that work? Did that get us results? And for, for most people, the results is, did that get us sales? Did we get new clients right away within that first week? And that's like, the short-term thinking, and then also this element of I'm relying on one channel. And here's the problem with that. As a buyer, we are in all kinds of different stages. So if I have a problem, I may vaguely know that I have some problem, but I'm not sure how to articulate it. We might call that very top of funnel, right, for the, in the buying process. I might have a problem, but I don't really know what the solutions are. I may have a problem and I have some idea about solutions and, and then I'm starting to get an idea of what are the products or services that help with that problem and maybe some of the brands that carry those products or offer those services. And then at the very bottom is I need to solve this today, this week, an hour ago, whatever. I'm hot and I'm ready to buy, but I just need to figure out who am I going to buy from. It's not a question of am I going to lunch? It's I'm going to lunch. What's the restaurant basically? And so those are all different levels. And so for me as a buyer, I'm going to be doing different things. So if I'm just learning about it, let's say I've got lower back pain, I may see a video on YouTube talking about the top five causes of lower back pain, right? Or if I do some Googling and I'm like, what, what can I do about lower back pain? I might learn about chiropractic. I might learn about moon boots where you hang upside down from a door, right? Like I might learn about an inversion table where it tips you back and it helps decompress your spine. And suddenly I'm learning about different solutions. Notice some of which are services, a chiropractor, some of which are products, an inversion table or moon boots. And then let's say I decide I'm going to get some moon boots. I want to hang upside down from my door frame like Batman who sells the best moon boots. So then by that point, I'm decided on, I'm going to buy moon boots. And it's a question of what are the products? Who are the brands from whom am I going to buy these moon boots? And so those are all different levels of awareness. And notice like I might just be using social media for the top. I might be using Google for the middle. And then I might be doing different kinds of Googling as I get to the bottom of I'm not even looking, I'm not even typing in back pain anymore. I'm typing in moon boots. And so those are all different stages of the funnel. And so from a company's perspective, if you want your marketing to work, if you want to be totally effective, you need that full funnel. You need something for the people who just barely even know they have a problem. You need something for people who are considering solutions and don't even know which one they're going with yet. And then you need content and advertising and marketing for people who know they're going to buy. And that's when you actually get into, here's the case studies, here's the testimonials, here's our reviews, here's the selling points, right? The features and benefits that are actually going to make a difference in your life. So once you have that full funnel in place, I would say that's at least three stages. That's top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. And all of those could be different channels, different marketing campaigns. Yeah, okay. No, that's awesome. And, and I think I've seen that with a lot of people too, is that especially sales driven marketing teams, they really focus you know, most of their marketing effort on that bottom of funnel. And they think who's ready to buy now and just neglect other parts of the funnel. When you're working with people and you're trying to implement a, a marketing strategy that's actually across the entire funnel, where do you start? Where, where do, you, do you map things out and try and figure out what's the missing pieces currently or what's your kind of strategy for remedying this problem? 
Yeah, what a great question. In general, once people understand this schema or this model of full funnel digital marketing, I actually say start at the bottom because I think it's going to be easier. So oftentimes when a client starts with us, I say, do you have an email list? They're like, yeah, we've got it somewhere. It's in constant contact or something. We send maybe quarterly at best. And I'm like, okay, let's get that list up to date. Are all your previous leads in there? Are all your previous customers in there? Are all your current customers or clients in there? No? Okay, let's get list created for all of those. And then let's make sure we're emailing that an appropriate amount. I think that's at least once a month. And for many businesses, you can do every week or every other week. It's not crazy. We don't need to be so worried about people unsubscribing and so on. It's like, we want to be building an audience and providing that value that we've you and I talked about in another episode, right? Of give that free value. And so if people are already in your orbit, they know you, they actually see and open emails from you. That's great. That's a good place to be closing sales. And then we work our way up the funnel. Okay. Can we get found on Google for the things that we sell? So if we're selling products, do our products show up? If we're selling services, do our services rank, right? And then a level up from that is, okay, are we remarketing? If someone goes to our website and leaves, are they seeing us? And you could argue that's bottom of funnel, middle of funnel, whichever, but it's just, they went to our website and they left. Is there a chance that we cookied them and we continue to market to them? I think that's a piece. And then we keep going up with those sort of Google search phrases of, what about people's problems? If they're just Googling something, looking for an answer to their problems, and they don't even know that solution, they don't even know what moon boots are yet, but they know they have lower back pain, what's our content up there that they're going to find on YouTube, they're going to find on podcasts, they're going to find on a blog post potentially, that they can see that. Or maybe we're running ads on Facebook and Instagram, and it's like the top five things you can do to relieve lower back pain. And we're, we're getting them interested. It's like they know they have that problem. They don't even know what the solutions are yet but we're advertising to them top of funnel to educate them more and basically bring them down the funnel, get them closer to buying from us. Awesome. Yeah. And I think a great point about starting at the bottom of the funnel too, is that you get results faster because those people are actually ready to buy. So you can get results fast and then start working your way up in the process too. And, and I guess, you know, invert, inverting that a little bit too. Let's say you are an organization that's very sales heavy and focus a lot of your marketing right now on just pitching your products and trying to get people to buy. What do you say is the best place to start top of funnel? And how do you start pitching to your clients? Hey, like we need to start broadly casting that to be people aware of their problems. Are there strategies you've seen like most successful right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I would even say that's a perfect question, James, because if you just do that bottom of funnel stuff, you just, we're going to run Google ads when people search for what we sell, we're going to show up, right? Or we're going to market to people on our email list. If nothing's coming in the top of that funnel, we're not getting anyone on the email list, right? or we're going to max out. There's something called impression share in Google ads. And so how many times a month do people even Google for what you're selling and whatever, whatever geography you're in? At some point, you're, you're 90 to 100%. You're showing up for Google ads all the time. You need to go up another level and educate people who don't even know to Google for moon boots or whatever it is you sell. So I think it really is that free guide. It's that lead magnet. And I love to get their attention with checklists. So for me, it's here's the SEO checklist that's going to make you money, basically, right? Or I was talking with you about, I'm working on one now for Google ads of just how many of these Google ads mistakes are you making? And that taps into another pe number of pieces of psychology there of just, if someone's not running Google ads or they're not interested in Google ads, they're not even going to click on that Facebook ad, right? But if they are, they may check it out and then they see this is free. This is, I'm not ready to talk to a salesperson yet. I don't want to talk to an agency or a consultant. I just want to learn a little more. It's this in-between step where they can put in their email and get some more information, but they don't have to go into some, any sort of what they feel might be a high-pressure sales environment. So I think it really is that free guide. It can be a calculator. It can be, a, it can be whatever free guide, but I love to get their interest with what are you missing out on that you don't even know about now? And even as we talked about before the call is scare them a little bit too of, are you making this mistake? I was teaching a workshop and I had uh, somebody who was a marketer at a law firm and she got telling me about a uh, client had misclassified uh, employees. Basically, they were calling them 1099 W-9 contractors when really by the books, the state would have c considered them W-2 employees. And so it was like a $90,000 lawsuit. It was a big deal. It was a huge mistake. And so, she's, so she said, let's call it W2 or 1099, which is it? She's thinking that's the lead magnet. And I said, the lead magnet is small business owners. Are you making this $90,000 mistake? No, I, I love right? that. I think so many people forget that they're solving problems for the customer. And if you can really emphasize what that problem is and the cost of that problem, that's a great way to make them aware that the problem exists in the first place. 
So I guess the last question I have for you, just because you know, we've talked a lot about the different aspects of the funnel and that was super valuable, but let's say you're a small marketing team, a one to three person marketing team. This sounds like a lot of things to think about. Do you have a resource or somewhere you'd point someone to say, hey, if I want to really understand the funnel and understand the strategy, how should they get started or need a resource they can go to? Yeah, that's great. I actually do have a, a selecting your channels and creating your digital marketing strategy workbook. So Best way to get that right now is just reach out to me. You can email me, Egan, E-A-G-A-N, at caravandigital.com. Happy to send that to you free of charge. I think you'll really get a lot of value out of it. I've put a lot of work into this workbook of boom, boom, boom. It walks you step by step how to think about all these things. There's a lot more in it, but there's a whole section on selecting channels and selecting what your marketing is going to be for top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. Awesome. Thanks, Egan. We'll appreciate the uh, information today and for joining me. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. 